Hijacked is the most important photographing book that's come out of Australia in at least five years. Photography is a tool of separation from the real world in a sense. It's an artificial world, but it communicates with the real world. Most of my photographs are about my relationship with the people I met either on the road for a minute, for a day, go traveling with them. Everyone has a story to tell. This is a photograph of my son and his friend, which is taken on the street that we live in. And um, I, I photograph my children to represent how I feel about being a mother. They're all self-portraiture, but they're not really about me in a sense. I try to use the figure as something ambiguous. So they're kind of about mood and emotion and our psychological states of mind and how that's represented through our bodies. The evolution of hijacks really under Mark because uh, he brought it to me as, uh, as a post-grad idea at Edith Cowan University and, uh, and really was so ambitious. I was really trying to mix all these different areas, you know, like people that would consider themselves in the high sort of art scene with uh, the street photographer, with the amateur, with someone from a, a painting background. To, to really play those off each other in a, in a way that gives you a, a result that is revolutionary, that does smash down and break, break the traditions. It's an unconventional uh, presentation in the book. There's, n there's no structure in terms of this section's about landscape or this section's about fashion. We've tried to incorporate a lot of different art forms, not just what people would uh, traditionally associate with photography. We've published various stills from particular artists' um, video art. We also have uh, two installation artists that are in the book. My work's now on the Australian Centre of Photography, which is an amazing gallery and it's an absolute privilege to be in the show. There is something that links them together well, not only the youth and the energy, uh, but also, I guess, showing the gritty, streetwise world uh, that we live in, in Australia and America. America and Australia are essentially both new world cultures and, and the look of them is there, you know, the shopping mall, the used car lots, the plasticity of uh, suburbia, but when you get into the layering of, of the subtlety of the work, you, you see that, you know, both cultures operate on really quite different levels. What will I do when there is no more oil? There's no more oil. The Lord will provide. Project began as an independent zine publication in 2005. A zine was the thing that you did before you would get into magazines, you know, like before you would really sort of broaden your, your audience. But we jumped that stage. We went from zine to book. The project was produced in my lounge room upstairs on my laptop computer. It took me about two or three years to complete this project. I was looking at uh, punk as a kind of um, a reference point. I'm not reading someone's CV to see if they've exhibited in you know, the Venice or had their work shown at a particular gallery or their, their work's in a particular collection. I'm just trying to evaluate the work as the work as it is. The video piece is called New Dawn and it's this idea where you get distracted by I guess the beautiful aesthetic and then don't see the actual the rubbish which you're looking at. So I was really interested in representations of uh, I guess the Iron Curtain or Red Curtain and I, I was playing with ways to look at that but also I guess the, the flip of that which is the, the capitalist excess. People aren't generally within my pictures, but the traces of people are contained there. 
in a sense, I'm using photography as a sort of a, a tool for evidence, searching, searching for traces of people. I never did, and I still to this very day never do have a clear idea of a final image. I have an idea of an experience that I want to have. I never had a, a final concept in head or a final composition. It was always, I want to exist in the same space with Laurie Nude and this ferret. Or I want to exist in the space with Rachel's freckles um, and this particular tree branch. With the Australian artists, the selection process was very much about where I live, um, what I do, who I'm in connection with. The more interesting aspect, I guess, was with the Americans. It was always a referential kind of um, flow on. This whole word of mouth thing um, in the digital sense has um, profound outcomes. I met Mark through the internet. Um, he was introduced to my work through a friend, looked at it on the website and then contacted me through email and asked me if I'd join. So I didn't actually meet Mark until yesterday. To have that many people involved and their networks, it's only going to spread. And the Americans that we have involved are quite yeah, web savvy, um, to say the least. Um, you can't back out of the deal, all right? <laughs> <laughs> He's networked, and he's networked without ever leaving Perth. So the whole thing is about relationships, conversations. And I think that's the big difference that underlies this exhibition from uh, a, a more conventionally curated exhibition. It doesn't seek authority, it seeks connection. We're always told in Australia, if you're in the creative industries and you want to make it, you have to, I mean, if we're living in Perth, you have to go to Melbourne or you have to go to Sydney. So we're trying to maybe avoid that and just go straight out to the rest of the world. Essentially in the end it was interest from abroad in Australian and American photography that got hijacked out to the rest of the world. It's very flattering to be a part of it because it has so much potential and it's very groundbreaking in the way that it's representing everyone and representing the idea of photography and the idea of art. It's my first international publication to actually be in a um, hardcover photography art book. Um, it's a great step forward for us. We've worked outside of the, the, the big publishing houses, we've worked outside of the artistic institutions, we've worked in a kind of un traditional and unconventional um, do-it-yourself punk uh, agenda to create a new manifesto. It's really different. I, I never expected coming here to see something like this. Something I've seen in a magazine or like, I don't know, it's real different. It's good. It's quite interesting for, for a photographic exhibition not, not to thrive on a theme. I really like that piece there with the bunny. It's great, you know, it's, it's nice to see a, a big mix of different artists all coming together and showing snapshots of life. Oh, goodness, some amazing images there. And you can catch Hijacked at the Australian Centre for Photography in Sydney until the 19th of July.